Hey YouTubians, what's up? I'm another XYZ and welcome back to another club banger. Today we are in R slash I don't work here lady back at it with another one. This time I found some that aren't just completely wholesome because the last time I made a video like this one people got a little bit upset because a lot of the posts that I found were just super wholesome. So this is a nice mixture of all of those. So let's just jump right into us not working at this place. I'm not a Target employee. I know I'm wearing a red polo, but I don't work here. So backstory. I used to work at a Michael's craft store. At Michael's, you wore aprons with a red M on it, and the local Starbucks changed their aprons from green to red. So I was on lunch break, and I went to Starbucks since I was thirsty. Q had employee. I see had employee livid, and I didn't think much of it until they came to my table. Excuse me, what are you doing not working? I don't work here. Lie, why are you wearing our apron? Trying to deflate the conversation, I show head employee my badge, the M badge. I work at the Michaels that's on the other side of Target. Those are lies. Get your A off that chair before I get the manager to fire you. Then my phone beeps. My close friend who still works at Michaels says that the two minutes remain on my break and that I should start heading back. As I get up, head employee grabs the back of my apron and pulls me back. Where the F do you think you're going? An employee hears what's going on and comes to see. What's going on? He won't go back to work. The employee studies me and says, He doesn't work here. He has the Michaels badge. Head employee, So you're defending him? The manager comes out. Head employee, control yourself. I saw this young man come in and he doesn't work here. But manage, get your stuff and leave, head employee. Head employee got fired and my pay for the week was lowered for arriving 25 minutes late. F you, head employee. F you. Ouch. Oof. This story's definitely tough because I have seen... This is a very interesting example of... I don't work here, but also like a manager. Like usually people who work there know if you don't work at that place, just looking at you. So especially if you're a head employee, you can usually tell the difference between, at least I used to work at Starbucks. The Starbucks red apron has a big Starbucks siren in the middle of it. So I don't know how you would really confuse someone uh, for working at Starbucks, even if the apron was incorrect. But either way, the fact that this person got their pay docked for being 25 minutes late to work over this whole fiasco, that just sounds like that person had a terrible boss at Michael's because if I told my boss at my current job what happened, they would probably just be like, dude, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, definitely strange. Uh, weird. I used to work here, dude, but I was useless then and I'm useless now. So I worked at Walmart for like four months. Background, I was not a good employee. I got moved off registers because I apparently insulted a woman who I was trying to explain that her card was being declined while she was $5 short. I got moved to fabrics and crafts because I guess when apparently you're unstable, the employee's solution is to give her a big pair of fabric scissors. The thing is, all I learned was how to zone. And I didn't even have any equipment on me because my info wasn't in the system to check out price checkers, walkie talkies, etc. I was always told they were working on it, and I also don't know anything besides fabric and glitter. Every time I asked for more training, I was told that I had been trained and needed to get it together. So I ended up quitting in a fairly interesting fashion. I posted it as my F it I quit story as a reply to an Ask Reddit thread a while ago, so if you want to peep my post history. Anyway. Our tale. I'm at the store. Everyone who works there is in a vest. I don't have a vest. I'm wearing jeans and an Evanescence t-shirt from 2007. And this was before the store allowed employees to wear whatever they wanted. So they had a limited selection of t-shirt types and black pants. So while I had been working there, I had a couple encounters with an older gentleman and that he would ask me where something is and I would honestly try to find it for him until I got impatient, valid, and ask someone else who did know and then made sure to find me after he got his whatever so he could insult my intelligence fair, I guess. I'm in the grocery section. I'm looking for rice. Guys, I was looking for rice. All I wanted was some rice, but there was so much rice. Hey, salsa. An interesting name for someone who's not me, I thought, as this shout floated through the air. A fun nickname, perhaps. Saucy. Then someone taps on my shoulder, interrupting one of the most important decisions of my life, and I realize the voice is familiar. I turn around and it's Grumpy himself, still trying to make that mustache work so he gets points for confidence. Salsa, he says again and stares. I gesture weakly behind me. Not sure what we are now, what his mission is. This is rice. You're, you're where the rice is. I know it's the GD rice. I need you to find paste salsa. There's none on the shelf. I'm so sorry, I say. As a non-salsa connoisseur trying to empathize, he already thinks I'm an idiot at this point, but now he really looks it. You work here, go restock the D salsa. It's the only kind my wife will eat, he says. I don't work here anymore. I pray this sets me free. It doesn't. But he does pause. He's thinking. He's thinking about me and about salsa. My brain is going back to rice. So you can't help me, he finally asks. Dude, when have I ever been able to help you? I finally say. He nods, at least he's satisfied. 
Good point, he says. He looks past me and sees an actual employee elbow deep in some Campbell's soup cans. Hey, salsa! Back to rice. I, I went with the jasmine. <laughs> Oof. This one, like, I guess I can understand if this person recognized you from your short stint that you did work there. But if, because I know they're talking about Walmart. Walmart now is a little bit more loose with their dress policy. But yeah, if this was during the era where they had to wear a particular outfit, why would you think that even if a person was there on their day off, like if I'm somewhere on my day off, I don't want anybody to talk to me. Ignore that I exist. I'm only there because I have to be. If I'm back at my job on my day off, I, I, I'm there because I have to be and not because I want to be. So please uh, don't talk to me unless we're actually good friends. <laughs> Girl Scouts work at Safeway now. So this happened last year during cookie season. Basically when the Girl Scouts sit at the stores and ask, would you like to buy a box of Girl Scout cookies? The last year I was a Girl Scout allowed to sell. My mom and I were set up by one of the doors in Safeway and I was doing my usual song and dance, asking people if they like Girl Scout cookies, saying that I was a Girl Scout, etc. When this man comes in, I greet him, as most Girl Scouts do, and think nothing of it. A bit later he walks out and I ask him if he'd like to buy a box of Girl Scout cookies. He says F you to me and my mom and then walks out. We both kind of laugh, and I think that I now have another thing to add to my list of stuff said to me. A small bit later, the man walks back in and says, I'm sorry for cursing at you. I thought you worked here. Somebody let me know that you were a Girl Scout. Here, he gave me $5 and bought a box before leaving again. Have to say, quite funny. TLDR. Guy at Safeway thinks my mom and I are employees while we are selling Girl Scout cookies, curses at us, and then comes back to buy Girl Scout cookies. I'm gonna be real, I don't know what the policy is for Girl Scouts, but if anybody ever started cussing me out for no apparent reason, I would tell him he needs to go to the next place to get Girl Scout cookies and be like, I ain't talking to you, you're gonna cuss me out. I am literally just volunteering at this point because Girl Scout cookies, I'm pretty confident. All that stuff, the sales for that are completely volunteer. I would not take that. It is not appropriate for somebody, regardless of whether or not they think you work in an establishment and they're upset about it, to treat you that way, even if you weren't involved in the situation, man, forget that. I don't work here. I'm here for my lunch. Let go of me or I'm calling the police. Okay, so two years ago, I worked at my local mall's Poundland, basically the British version of the dollar store. It was three days before Christmas, and if you've ever worked retail, you know what a nightmare that is. In the mall, there's this cute little cafe that I sometimes like to get my lunch at. It's a bit on the pricey side, but it's a rare treat for myself. I was dressed in my shop's uniform, which was black trousers, a black polo, black leather dress shoes, and a name tag with my hair tied up, if long. It very closely resembles the cafe's uniform, except for the fact that my name tag clearly says Poundland on it, and they wear shirts, not polos. The times I've been there for lunch, and I've sometimes been mistaken for the staff, but the people are generally good about it, and when I explain on this day, it was not the case. On this day, the cafe was of course quite busy. I mean, the Christmas wretch are as eager to eat as I am. I get a table, and I sit down, and I'm waiting for my order, when I feel a woman tapping my shoulder quite roughly. I actually end up with a bruise from this, as I bruise easily. Do you really think you should be taking up a table when people are waiting to be served? I explain to her that I'm on my lunch, and I don't actually work here, but in the shop across the mall. Of course, she doesn't believe me and insisted I'm lying. I point to my name tag and then ask that she leaves me alone. This, it seems, was the wrong thing to do, as then she drags me out of my seat by my arm. Now, I'm a tiny girl, 5'2", if I'm lucky, so moving me was easy for her, and she begins to scream for a manager while dragging me from my seat. By now, everyone is staring at us, and I tell her, I don't work here, I'm here for my lunch. Let go of me or I'm calling the police. At this time, the manager runs over and shouts at her to let go of me. She begins to scream about how the servers here are lazy and I was taking up a table that should go to a customer. And he looks at me and just tells her that I am a customer and I do not work for his cafe. In the end, mall security threw her out and I was asked if I wanted to press charges. By this I mean I was asked if I wanted to get police involved at all. There was no police in this mall as mall security dealt with the issue. I didn't as I didn't think it was worth the hassle and an apology, I got a free lunch that day from the cafe. So thanks for the free lunch crazy woman who can't read a name tag. Ooh, oh man, that is a, that's a big oof. That's a, that's a triple yikes and that's gonna be a certified yikes from me dog. That's wild, but believable. I have people, I've seen people throw fits about this kind of thing. That's why, like, when I was working at Starbucks, for example, they made us take breaks in the back or outside of the building for the most part. Or if we sat in the lobby, we had to take, like, our apron off. We were, they, they were very particular about that kind of thing. Same thing with Apple. If you are an Apple employee, if you take your, if you are wearing your shirt outside of the building, um, you can get fired for that. <laughs> <laughs> if you wear anything that identifies that you're an Apple employee outside of the building, they would they, you would straight up get fired for it. So it was a requirement that you take your shirt off. And I think it was a good thing that they did that. 
because even if you look similar to a place of someone's employment or if somebody identifies you from a place, God, it becomes such a pain in the butt. I work next door, lady, girl of my dreams. Okay, so I work at an Australian store called Bunnings. I often walk to Woolies to get lunch during my break. Bunnings team members, employees, wear a red tee with a big green logo on the back of it, and people that work at Woolies wear a green tee. So I was on my break during my shift, and I was at the checkout line at Woolies when a lady tapped my shoulder and asks how someone goes about applying for a job at Woolies. I was taken aback by this question, as I'd never experienced anyone mistaking my distinctive uniform before. I simply stated that I don't work here, but I do work next door. She apologized and asked how someone would apply at Bunnings, and I was happy to tell her about our awful system and our excruciating website. She thanked me and told me that she really appreciated it. I told her that it was no problem, and I thought it was really the end of it considering how slow we are when it comes to hiring new employees. Almost three months later, I've fallen for one of the new employees at Bunnings. She's blonde hair, blue eyes, and a smile that melts my heart. We started dating only weeks after she started working at Bunnings. I met her parents last night, and I wasn't sure whether to laugh or cry when I found out that it was the same lady that asked me how to get a job for her daughter. Hmm, life is funny like that. Wow, that's super wholesome. See, I like this subreddit because there's a nice mixture of like hilariously aggressive people doing dumb things. And then there's people that have like actual moments where they get to help people. And I think that's really cool. And I think it shows that like Reddit does have a little bit of a softer side. <laughs> So I really appreciate that. It's kind of nice to see some of the more wholesome stories. It, it, whether or not they're real, I, I, I don't know, man. But there is actually a part of I Don't Work Here Lady where you can actually go and debate whether or not the stories are real in like a chat. So if you guys want to go do that, I guess you can head over to the Reddit and uh, chat with them whether or not you believe these stories are real now. So that's kind of cool. And that being said, y'all, thank you for tuning in for this one. This was another exciting episode of I Don't Work Here Lady. And like always, if you have a subreddit that you want me to go into, check out. I'm down for doing obscure subreddits. Let me know. Also, if there's one that I haven't done in a while that you'd like to see me add to the rotation, drop a comment down below. And as always, no glove, no love. Peace.